Hey, good afternoon. Help. Uh, happy Sunday, I guess uh, we should say. Uh, my name is Mark, and I'm the host of this show. Mark knows everybody. Everybody, ladies and gentlemen. And this is a show uh, that I do occasionally where I showcase my friends. I showcase various events, along with my other show on my network here, NBL Entertainment. Uh, on Saturdays, we do Saturday morning cartoons, where we talk about cartoons that we grew up with in our past. Uh, every other Friday, we do classic television uh, Smackdown, where we showcase uh, uh, live action shows that we grew up on. In fact, my show uh, that's coming up, and I'll put up a banner for it later, I'm doing classic sci-fi TV shows from the 70s. And as I research this, I cannot believe the number of shows, sci-fi shows in the 70s, for some bizarre reason, uh, th there was an overload. I mean, Gene Roddenberry, I think, had three TV series alone that I'm going to show you. Um, if you remember Planet Earth, uh, what else? Strange New World, believe it or not, in reference to, uh, not in reference to what the show that we're doing, but just a similar name. Um, so catch us this Friday for classic television Smackdown, and we'll go back in the future. I'm going to go ahead and bring up my fantastic co-host, minus one, minus two, actually, uh, Dennis Bailey, Pat Duff, Phil, I may or may not be listening in. He's traveling. Michael Jan Freeman is busy today. Uh, nonetheless, it doesn't stop us for our topic for today. And if you've been watching Strange New Worlds, um, I think we're all still very much impressed. Each ep episode, Dennis will give a 10 to everything. So I think he's 10. I'm going to ask you, Dennis, what show did you not give a 10 to? Um, possibly um, Oh, no, no. In reference to Strange New Worlds this season alone. Have they all been 10s to you? Your words are strange. I'm what? I've given a tip to everything we've discussed. Yeah, well, okay. All right. Well, and I justify that to go back really briefly and really briefly last week. I'm kind of a binary guy. You know, I'm Siskel and Ebert. I would much prefer giving a thumbs up or a thumbs down since we're doing this 10 thing scale that doesn't compute to me. I just, if, if I didn't like it, I'd give it a zero. If I like it, I'd give it a thumbs up or a 10. And, and that's the extent of my ability to find. I, granted, I, I understand that it, that you you like them all. That that's fine. I I was always go to a degree of like, uh, in, in terms of how much did you like it? Did you like it a lot? Did you love it? Uh, yada yada yada. Thus the the, the like scale. Just yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll keep it Dennis's way. Okay, we'll we'll put it. <laughs> Pat, how you doing, buddy? Great. How are you? How are you? Oh, um, I'm, I'm loving the series. Uh, we know that, folks, you have a bevy of review shows uh, out there. Uh, people who have their own individual podcasts. I hate that word, by the way. I call this a webcast. Um, and, and they've all given, and it's just a matter of opinion. They've all liked it, not liked it, whatever. Uh, but I like to get personal opinions from people I know. Uh, I like to ask them personally what they thought about all each and every episode that we've talked about on Strange New Worlds. Uh, thus, this episode for this week, we're also going to talk about next week's episode if we have to. Uh, <clears throat> but <laughs> um, we'll, we'll towards the end of the show, we'll get to that. But this was episode eight of this season. Okay, under the cloak of war. Let me ask both you guys. I'll go to Dennis first. Uh, ask both you guys in reference to Klingons for this time period. We know we're 10 years out from Kirk. Um, if you look at Jess Kirk's Star Trek, uh, including all the movies, um, Klingons were pretty prevalent. Uh, typically the major adversary. We looked at Discovery, and Discovery introduced the Klingon race that I personally uh, was not a fan of. Um, they decided to go drastic makeup. Uh, Dennis, let me ask you, did you expect Klingons for Strange New Worlds time period? If so, how do you feel about it overall? Um, well, I think before I saw the, uh, the uh, 
you know, previews and trailers for the first year of Spring Me World, I probably was assuming you'd see more Klingons and more of the familiar um, species because they're sort of the bread and butter of the franchise. Yeah. And also, frankly, they're easy conflict. Um, I was really surprised to see the uh, Gorn instead. I've been, been very oh. that. But they have they have released the Klingons back in frame over a period of time. It's sort of like like they they assess and they've indicated that they they assess the way they were early on in this country, decided they didn't really want to do that in exactly that way. And I think they just decided we can find a lot of interesting other things to do. They held them into the second year. Yeah, yeah. Um uh, Pat, uh go ahead and, and, and chime in here on, on Klingons overall. Uh, for the Star Trek series, plural. So, in general, uh, you know, I did keep my fingers crossed that maybe we would just see Klingons that looked like the original series. But, you know, knowing that Enterprise took place 100 years before where we are now, and they had bumpy Klingons as well, I'm like, well, okay, this, 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 We've sort of accepted the fact that in Star Trek motion picture, Gene said, this is what they would have looked like if I'd had the money. So apparently this is what they look like. So I can live with that. I, I would say that for 10 episodes of season one of Strange New Worlds, the fact that yeah. it took us to season two to get to them, you know, clearly they're not overplaying these guys. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's new and fresh. And, and this was a, um, a very, I'm not going to say significant, but... Uh, it's a storyline that they decided they wanted to include, namely because of the quote-unquote Klingon war that happened prior to Mbinga and uh, uh, Nurse Chapel uh, joining the Enterprise, I'm assuming, because we still have backstory that we need to pick up on. Um, but this episode alone pretty much introduced us to the fact that, yes, of course there's Klingons out there. I'm assuming if we went all the way to the end of Strange New Worlds, that somebody's going to bitch that, wait a minute, where are the Klingons, you know? So, you know, I did kind of catering to both sides, uh, burning a candle on each end here. I'm assuming that if we see more Klingons, I, we already, I think we got a synopsis of every episode for this season. And I think this is the only appearance of Klingons, if you guys can correct me or not on that. Um, so, so the route there there is there a Klingon, Klingon battle cruiser, battle cruiser in the subspace, subspace Rhapsody, Rhapsody preview. preview. Oh, darn it all. <laughs> so, you know, that's all I need to see are singing Klingons. <laughs> oh, well, Although, frankly, I think the, the Klingons have sort of an operatic... Uh, I was going to say that, yes. I, I, And that I could probably deal with, but if we're looking at next week's... You know what? You know, let's just move forward because it looks like it's already come into the conversation twice um so uh my did i upload this yet no i did not i didn't upload it yet so God, okay so that's uh that was murphy's law telling me i shouldn't do it because i haven't even uploaded into the program yet uh yeah. which unfortunately i, I maybe I go ahead while you're having your please please <laughs> um, uh, I, I i i give them a big thumbs up for um, um you know, when they do the previously on uh, Star Trek for uh, putting that sequence from the first episode of Discovery into the, um, into the, um, yes, Dennis, good like, point. You know, let's own it. This is where we can. We're not going, no, we never did that. You know? Yes, you know, excellent point because I didn't think we were going to hear anything or see anything about Discovery during Strange New Worlds. And in fact, we did in relation to the Klingons. I said, oh, uh, there they are. The Klingon War, well, the Klingon War was on Discovery and involved those Klingons. And you know, you just, you just assume the audience uh, does not have a problem following these things. And I don't think the audience does. I think occasionally producers of these things or, or studios underestimate. Remember the introduction of the uh, Tholians, all the Tholians, no, the uh, Colossians, the uh, flashback episode, sort of a flashback, actually. The episode of Discovery which was built on the uh, Menagerie. They started that uh, episode with a flip book version of showing uh, uh, images from the from the original Star Trek pilot of uh, Jeffrey Hunter and Yeah, and uh, 
you know, and they did it in a slightly storybook fashion. But basically, they said, yeah, this is this is, this is what you remember, you know. And now we're just they're the same thing. They, yeah. They yeah. Well, yeah. And, 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 I did sort of the same. Kudo, thing. Kudo, kudos, kudos to, to writer, writer Davy Perez, Perez for, for saying, "Hey, you know, you know we, we had this Klingon this war, war two, three, two years three years ago in Discovery, Discovery, and I can do I can my, do my PTSD, PTSD show, show, and I don't have I don't to make, have make it all up because it's, it's right. just it's there. there." Yeah, and and it's interesting that you said that PTS uh, PTSD show. So. Obviously, uh, something happened with these two that we were kind of brought up the speed on. And these two I'm referring to, of course, Nurse Chapel and, and, and Binga. If we go all the way back to TOS, the classic Trek, and, and uh, remember uh, Dr. Mbinga then only being a added cast member or added uh, 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 script piece, um, four and it was that was Galileo seven? C- c- correct me if I'm wrong. That we saw in Bingo for the first time. Yeah, was first on um, private little war. war. Patterns of, of uh, uh, um, private little war. Private little war. Private little war. Then, uh, which which was, was, was in, uh, the original the series Vietnam, Vietnam show. show. Yeah, which is interesting because that was war related, and then we come, you know really forward here with Strange New Worlds kind of, it seems to me that the writers are doing their homework, which is great. Um, Private Little War, okay, so Mbenga obviously was involved in war. We see the first time, for us, uh, appearance of Nurse Chapel in this flashback of this war scene, and we're finding a lot more of how much of a badass Nurse Chapel really is. Once as a nurse, and twice as a fighter, and of course the uh, oh my God, was it Protocol Ten? Protocol Twelve. Protocol Twelve. We're seeing the use of this heavily adrenaline drug that these guys use basically to save their life. We saw the Andorian commander who forcibly wanted Mbenga to, uh, you know, install that in all his troops, and now we're seeing. Okay, now we know this is like. You know, whatever, giving all of our troops, you know, some cocaine, you know, to fight in our wars. It, it was a, a major no no, you know, morally. And now we're seeing Protocol 12 as being that drug, not only in the flashback, but in current day of Strange New Worlds being used. And we're like, well, my God, that must be some freaking war. So let's go ahead and talk about the synopsis of this episode. Okay. Obviously, a uh, Klingon general went Ben Franklin on. Should I be saying no? Not Ben Franklin. Uh, uh, Arnold. Um, um, help. Um, Benedict, Benedict Arnold. Yeah, thank you. Uh, kind of went Benedict Arnold on on his his own people by assisting the uh, Starfleet into negotiation negotiations of peace. But the backstory on this general was. Uh, there was a label given to him, the butcher of, uh, what was the name of the planet? Jakal, Jakal, Jalal, help me say that again. Jagal. Jagal. Thank you, sir. Uh, the battle of Jagal. And, uh, obviously he comes aboard, uh, welcomed aboard the enterprise to kind of brokerage, uh, some sort of peace deal or peace, um, uh, theory on this. Pat, you're good at this. Why don't you, uh, follow up with me on this synopsis tell me a little bit more of what you think of general jagal well so interestingly the thing that i thought was the most fascinating about it and perhaps the best scene in this show is when mbenga and uh whatever we're calling the general Rawl. Uh, i know we, we are we calling raw r-a-h-l i think raw no it's h raw raw r-a-h what a when bad they, name. That's a bad name. Right, right. <laughs> when they finally, <laughs> finally get, down get down to it, it Mabenga's, Mabenga's like, like, I killed I those, those dudes, dudes, and I'm ashamed. And, ashamed. and the Klingon and the guy is like, I didn't kill those dudes, and I'm ashamed that I didn't kill those dudes. It, it was really so, weird. So, 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 that so that played, played really, really well. well. Um, um, it does kind of, in my opinion, make you wonder, and I'm going to come back to this shot you've got right there, Mark. Um, yep. Um, the, uh, 
you know, you, you know, do you have do to wonder, wonder what the general, general how this guy, how this guy played, played his cards to get in the position he was in to show, to show up on the Enterprise. Well, the Enterprise, well, the Enterprise was kind of just the bus, right? right? They weren't they really, really, he wasn't really there to deal with them. They were just the the space uber to get him from point a to point b so yes right number one but, to come and say hey let's get here faster because he's annoying the crew and let's but get him it, it was really weird because you know of course we spoiled you know and that's what this show do is spoiler alert for everybody prior to the show uh but we went really forward into this the episode itself with a spoiler alert uh where we found out exactly who the the butcher was but why would the general take credit for being a traitor it, it didn't make any sense and he really didn't do it it didn't make any sense to me but go ahead dennis i, I see i i see your, your your brain working there help me on this actually doing a little research there on camera i'm sorry so, oh no problem what happens with a uh, general with uh, doc Ra, uh in terms of narrative i believe is simply that he's a brutal um uh, commander and when uh, this commando, we're going, spoiler alert, folks, you know, comes after him, uh, his uh, his senior officers uh, lock the guy from fascinating him, and he flees. So he's a coward. He's a coward. Yeah. Uh, he, I, uh, one way to, um, to, to frame it, I guess, is that he realizes that, that um, he's dumb in his own culture he's done among the three months. so when he's um, taken prisoner or when he surrenders to the federation he tries to rebuild himself uh in the mold of, of his, his his it's like a defector right someone who does well he is a defector someone who uh commits a, a crime against government leads to another country and then uh, uh, tries to find a place within the, you know, the, the elite structure of that society, which is often actually usually quite difficult uh, for people. But you don't want to go, you know, you, you, you don't, he doesn't obviously intend to go from being a general to being a pensioner somewhere else. Um, he, he, he remakes himself in the image of the Federation. Uh, yeah. In attempts, to, uh, that's just my interpretation. Nothing like that. I said, in an attempt to, you know, scale the, uh, the, the social and, and political structure. Okay. I think he's uh, absolutely sincere in working for the Federation. I don't think his motives are, are certainly not altruistic, and I don't think they're particularly noble in any way. He was a member of the elite, and he wants to be a member of the elite. And he's and working on a federation at this point, as far as you know. You know what the surprising thing about all of this, that, that even after the time that he defected to the Starfleet, that he, he hadn't been assassinated by any other Klingon that's in society at that point. Mm -hmm. I, I'm surprised he hasn't been taken out. Um, I, I, because I there's enough social interaction among Klingons and humans right now. For now to make that it's probably true. I, I, I agree. It, it, it's probably true. But like assassins are, assassins doesn't have to be a member of that specific race in order to no. assassinate you. If, if, you know? if you make the Klingons the Russians, you can see how they could get an assassin. But if well, you make the Klingons the North Koreans, then it gets a little more complicated. Yeah. You know, well, you know, then... How, how, how adversaries relate to other politically. Yeah. Well, then you could hire Orions. I'm thinking Orion could have taken them out or something. Anyway, that's irrelevant. But Pat, I'm going to go to you in a sec, but I, I'm going to explain my my thought pattern on this like I kind of halfway did before. Uh, this Klingon admitted to a uh, war crime that he didn't actually commit, but was committed by, and I'm calling him Benga at this point, an assassin and an elite black ops soldier that that's another backstory we're gonna have to find out about how that happened but actually the the the, the crime the the crime war happened with a member of starfleet or was was attributed to a member of starfleet through the admittance of mbenga himself man this is oh and also because of the ins, the insistence of the black ops and dorian commander who knew more about mbenga than anybody and i'm like whoa there's more going on here we're gonna have to find out down the road what what is it that we don't know what's your feelings on that pat well so i know honestly until i had a little bit of i didn't quite figure out the connect the dots on the general yeah 
until, until actually, actually we're conversing, conversing right here, right now. now. You know, maybe, maybe he, really he really left, left himself, himself no way out, out other, other than to be this, this defecting ambassador style, style person. person. Because, because once, once he's, he's, you know, whoever the three Klingons were, he's like, hey, go take care of whatever's going on in here. I am fleeing. You know, you so know, he's so basically he's embarrassed, embarrassed himself, himself at that point. point. Yeah. He's like, he's like screw, screw honor, honor and, and, you know, yeah. day to die and all that. And I'm an outie. outie. So, so once he's, he's, you know, it's, it's to, to his, his best, best interest, interest to then say, say oh, oh, my three my guys, guys were cowards. cowards. I killed them myself and I took off. So he's invented a story that plays with the Klingons. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, shit. Well, if this ever falls apart, what am I going to do? And so... Becoming the, you know, the, the ambassador of the Federation is, is sort of gives him an out to not have to deal with any of that stuff anymore. Well, it's interesting that Mbenga found it. Uh, he was guilt written that he obviously let one get away. That's the reason, you know, why he was reacting so much to uh, the general being on the Enterprise because there his his folly has shown up in front of his freaking face. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? You know, it's almost, and I hate using this analogy, but I can't think of a better one. We did this before. It's as if, you know, Hitler escaped, and all of a sudden Hitler shows up for dinner one day, and you were assigned to a mission to kill Hitler, and Hitler's standing there in front of your face, and it's like, what would you do? Would you now, after decades, however long it's been, carry out your mission, complete your mission, shall I say, or allow him to be to play the role that he's playing now you know i mean it, it was an interesting battle of uh wills here on his part on what he should or should not do go ahead dennis okay, okay. Uh, i'm just I'm on, on i um, um, i'm on a completely different, different page, page about what the what narrative, narrative of the story, of the story is, is. Mm -hmm. so, um, um there is no war no crime, crime in question, question uh, uh, regarding, regarding Mabat Mabat. Mabat. Uh, uh, the, the war crimes, crimes that are being talked about, about aren't, the aren't the killing of these three Klingon, Klingon generals, generals, it's the killing of civilians by uh, yes. uh, the general yeah. order. So, so uh, uh, when uh, 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 Ra uh, claims credit for having uh, killed uh, these guys uh, in order to escape, he has not committed a war crime, I mean, possibly in the eyes of Klingon. He's not he's committed not a war crime, crime. nor was, was has, has Mabenga guilt ridden by having committed a war crime. He was a commander in the wartime. Um, he's guilt ridden because he didn't want to be involved in killing people. So, yeah. Dennis, that sort of backs up the theory. Having had to kill these people. And this problem with Ra being right there right then was that this guy was a constant reminder of what he had done. And that's what he says in his, you know, in his so sweet two or three at the end, you know, that, um, leave me alone, you came here, um, you're, you're, you're taking this on as if it's a glorious thing, and you're reminding me of this awful thing I did. Yeah. Um, and that's what troubles me about you being here. He says that's not quite as words. So anyway, that was my take on the narrative at that point. Um, yeah. Well, so Dennis, I Dennis on that note, I, I you know, stop yeah. from, first of all, Babs, Olus Sun McCoon, that's the that's best I can do. Um, he's um, just, just brilliant. brilliant. I mean, I think he's, 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 uh, he's amazing, amazing the characters on this show who are introduced in what you think of the supporting position in the first couple of episodes, because, of course, the show's about Pipe, you know, Spock and Una. Yeah. Yeah, now yeah. Chapel and, and um, Mabenga yeah. have moved for a while to take center stage. Yeah. Pat, I know you're trying to interject. Go ahead. I'm going to inter interfere right now so you can go ahead and get your point in uh, like well, you were trying to do. But go ahead. So to, to Dennis's point, point, I think we've established, we've established that the general, general uh, 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 this, guy this guy will say, say anything, anything to make himself make look himself better. better. Yeah. So it's like... So it's like I mean, I mean, I don't know, I don't that, know that Klingons, Klingons aren't, aren't going to kill civilians, 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 women, and children, and children. but he's but like, whoa, he's like, whoa, 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 I didn't, I didn't do, that, do that, so I'm yeah. not a war criminal to the Federation. It was, it was those, those three, three other dudes, other dudes that, that I killed. killed. <laughs> right, so right. He's, he's pumped he's up this pumped entire, entire story to put him in the best position to then go, I'm your best voice, voice back, back to the Klingons, Klingons to negotiate, negotiate some, some peace. peace. So, so it, clearly, clearly this guy will say, say anything. anything. So, so 
one thing I will say, Mark, is interestingly, you know, from a production standpoint, Phil, my brother, and I both noticed this straight out of the gate. At 34 minutes and 15 seconds into the episode, there is a lot of ADR. ADR being what? Dialogue recorded after principal photography has ended. Okay. So if you go back and watch that, it it occurs just a little bit short of that, and it occurs for 15 full seconds when Mbenga and Ra are doing the wrestling thing. And so, and so I, I, I will, I'm going to preface this. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. I'm going to preface, preface this with saying I hate it when, hate when people speculate about, about things because, because I feel like they're like generally wrong. wrong. But, my but my speculation, speculation here is, is Ra was probably, was probably angrier, angrier than, than they wanted him to appear in the final cut of the episode because he comes off pretty light and breathy in the lines that are released. The other other choice choice is they they actually actually rewrote some some of this dialogue dialogue because there's 15 15 full seconds seconds where you you don't don't see anybody's anybody's lips and you just see hands hands waving over over Ra's back. back. And I'm like, well, something something was afoot here, here, whether it was the performance. And I will back this up with New Eden on Discovery. The, the actor, actor who played who Jacob, played Jacob who, was who was the guy who was, who was looking for people, people and Captain Pike came, came in, he was 100% looped by another, by another actor, actor because they did not like the tonal quality of the way yeah. the performance came off in the final cut. Sure. So it, so it would, would not, not surprise me if they if either, they, they, they thought he was like too angry for what they were looking for in this episode, or they just felt like they'd left some instrumental dialogue out from some other cuts. Yeah, and then, and then patch, patch this thing back together with the ADR. So you're saying in post production, uh, w- when they review this or in the editing process, let's even say that uh, the the script that was written and that was executed during filming, uh, they didn't like. They they well, decided they either, they, either they either decided to, decided tweak, to tweak lines, lines to, get to get the message get the across, across, or they just or they flat just out. out wanted a wanted different a i mean a lot of kira in the deep space nine, nine pilot, pilot. A, a, lot a lot of it was loose yeah uh, yeah but, uh, but so in this case, in this case they may have they to, and it was the, the lines were when he's basically he's asking the bank to join him and i think they it's possible they just wanted to be more friendly at that point instead of more angry of just gotten up off the mat and kicking each other's ass but they clearly did this in post interesting Interesting. I, I also noticed that, yes, when faces weren't shown, uh, I, I thought at some point that there was some stunt actors that were actually put into that scene as well, performing some of the moves. Because, number one, we knew that uh, the general, because I, I can't get his name right, uh, the general walked on a cane. All of a sudden, he can perform <laughs> judo. Uh, yeah, he's like Yoda. As he, he leaves that scene, he stops and picks up his face. Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's like Yoda all over again. And I, I'm sitting here saying, well, wait a minute. The guy's crippled, literally. Uh, he's crippled, and he can perform judo? How, how is this possible? Regardless, I don't know why that scene was written like that. To suggest that he was duplicitous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, 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 and I'm... To, 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 to fame weakness, uh, there may be an advantage. You think that was part of the role? infirmity... You know, I remember a story about a guy who was, especially he was the ex-professional football player, and he became a salesman. And um, he um, found that uh, people that he was going to to sell things to uh, were sometimes unnerved by his size. So he developed the habit of cripping and apologizing for his bad knee on entering offices where he was going to sell. <laughs> Yeah, well, welcome, Phil, by the way. Thanks for the comment. Uh, stay with us, Phil. If you have any comments uh, about this episode, you are engaged as well. Um, that the general was faking all along. Well, yeah, like I said, Mike just brought up this, that maybe this is part of his role of being uh, important to um, uh, Starfleet. Let me ask you guys, uh, moving towards the ending, we're going to come back. Did you in hey, fact before we think... go to the ending? Before we go yeah. to the ending, ending okay. let's jump let's back jump to the beginning. The beginning. Clint, Clint Howard. Howard. Oh. oh, wait for it. Wait for it. I, I, I wasn't 
going to the ending because I know we still have time. I was going to the ending for a reason, not to end the show with the ending. <laughs> I wasn't doing that. And we are going to go back to him in a minute. And in fact, I need time before we talk about him because I'm looking for gotcha. something on, on the internet. And, I, and you guys keep saying stuff interesting that I'm not having a time, having enough time to find what I'm looking for because, you know. talk to each other while you do that. Oh, you wouldn't do that. <laughs> hey, let me do this real quick, okay? Because I got to get this. It's an earworm uh, uh, right now because we did talk about um, next week's episode. And I told you guys how I was looking for the... This is not the right one. I'm going to play this trailer. I, I suppose I did this before, but... That did not upload the way it should have. I wonder, that's weird, but let me play this for you guys real quick, okay? This Ambassador, is... it is my honor to welcome you aboard the USS Enterprise. Now the Klingons call him the Butcher of Dagal. The Federation believes that everyone deserves a second chance. No, he's pretending. Sometimes you pretend something long enough, it comes the truth. War doesn't leave you. It can bury itself, but it's always there. All of us have to remember what we love most. We fight for them. But if we don't fight, we don't win. Now, that was the trail I wanted to play in the beginning of the show, and I just totally forgot um, to, to pretty much um, pre-log what we were going to talk about in the first place. Uh, but let me ask you this question, and we're going to get, I got to find this picture before we even get to who Pat wanted to talk about, which, my God, he's, he's, he's going to be out Kevin Bacon uh, in, in, in Star Trek or science fiction in general. He's going to be out Kevin Bacon, I can tell. Uh, Mike, what do you, okay, I will, oh, sorry, uh, I will. Um, obviously, you, you guys have mentioned PTSD in this and i agree that it exists uh within both uh chapel and mbinga but in terms of mbinga's responsibility i don't think it attributed to ptsd i honestly think it attributed to a failed mission and a missed opportunity which has now presented itself so i don't think there was any thing you disagree dennis Absolutely. I, I, okay. I, 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 can't, I can't get that reading out of the uh, story. Say again. I can't get that reading out of the story or the scene at all. But people, you know, people get different things out of the shows. It's just like. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying it, the war itself did not present PTSD on Mbinga and Chapel. I'm talking about this specific situation. I think. I think that it's, it's whether he. Acted out of acted in a state of mental responsibility or not. Yes, and that's what exactly what I'm saying. It was a missed opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I think it, we. It, for me, I want to separate the PTSD uh, um, from what he felt was a failed attempt or a failed mission, and that he wanted to finish what he could not finish at the time. I thought I think of PTSD as seriously a mental scenario that's kind of hard to get out of your system uh, much like this like I said a failed opportunity here and, and and I think that if he said my god this this evil man is standing in front of me as we speak uh, I am in where's that picture I am in uh, a meeting with my uh, fellow oops that's not it my fellow people well this is probably a good scene right here yeah, where where Pike picked up that there's something wrong, and obviously I don't know why he didn't. He didn't know the backstory of what's wrong with him uh, at the time. Even when they're sitting in this this meeting discussing about having the general for dinner and on the ship and yada yada yada, and clearly uh, Chapel and Mbinga were disturbed. Oh, by the way, even Ortega, which. We knew she fought in a war, you know, which obviously was this war because she either was expressing her opinions as a soldier or she actually has something to do with this encounter, which I don't think she did. What do you think, guys? I, I think I Ortega knew, knew him, him from, from reputation. reputation. I, don't, I don't think she had direct involvement. Personal encounter, you think, or in battle I, encounter? I, 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 
I think she I just think knows she him knows from reputation in the war. Yeah. On the other hand, as the viewer, you know, when the general first comes in, we don't know if Mabenga is having a bad reaction just because he's a Klingon. But clearly, as we get through the story, I think we can assume that he's having a bad reaction because he is the butcher of Jagal. Yes. And he, he knows he's the guy. Yeah, his reputation preceded him. So, obviously, everyone who has anything to do with that war, just a soldier in general, uh, uh, knew of this guy's so-called horrific background, which, in fact was probably still legit but had nothing to do with the murder of his own men in retreat for himself if that made any sense what i said um <laughs> mike is saying look at that smirk on his face well on whose face uh, uh the generals oh yeah I'm, yeah well yeah, that's I'm an pretty... interesting bit of editing in the um, trailer too which is that uh, in the preview they hold on that smirk on his face uh, to um, you know, to emphasize, as if to say, this guy's really oily. But when you watch the actual episode, that's a fleeting moment, and his attention actually seems to be directed at things other than than you know being smug about Ortega. It's a nice little bit of editing. You know, hey Pat, can you yep, yep. explain this clip that you or this picture right here that you sent me? So. The guy, the guy on the, on the left, left is director, is director Jeffrey, Jeffrey Bird, Bird. and he, uh, uh, early, early in his industry in days, days, worked with Spike Lee on, on many, many things, things you would recognize. recognize. He didn't work on The Wire, did he? Uh, he may have worked on The Wire. He's okay, I don't know. Lengthy, he's got a He's pretty got a lengthy, lengthy uh, list, of uh, list of credits. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Robert, uh, uh, Robert Wisdom, who, who played um, the general here, uh, is well known for his portrayal of something bunny. I think it's the bunny something character in, in The Wire uh, oh, back right. during yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, back, back during that time. Uh, was actually is a series based on my city, if you guys didn't know that. Um, no, no. Yeah, Baltimore. I so, did a lot of employment in the uh, television industry up there for years. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there was quite a, uh, a film operation in Baltimore, largely. Yeah, I, th I think I meant to s put this clip up. This is the one with... Yeah, and he's a little easier to see in that one. Yes, he is. Jeff Bird and, and, and Robert, uh, Robert Wisdom um, on this. Um, uh, I, let me let me ask you guys this overall execution of the role on terms of Robert Wisdom's uh, character, the general on this. Would you have wanted to see someone more you remember the uh klingon prison warden in star trek uh six 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 thank you very much i'm bad on the numbers better on the titles <laughs> than anything uh morgan shepherd i think his name was that that actor's yep, name yeah. uh yeah. he looked more the part of a um war criminal that you, you'd want to track down. I think this guy was a little too a little too friendly. Yeah. yeah. Um it, even even more forgiving on our part, us forgiving him, more forgiving on his part. He didn't look like a crusty old Klingon that you wanted to stranglehold, right? Well, and, and that's what that's what took me a little while to come to you, Marcus. I, I think this guy's really just gonna say whatever makes him look best to whoever's in the room that day. Yeah, yeah. As politicians so, will so do. I, I will say, as I watched it, I kind of expected him to be a little more Klingon and pissed off, and you know, crack open in the the scene with Ibanga and the gym. Yeah. Since, since he didn't, I'm kind of like, well, he's just he's just. He's just He's going to change the story for whoever's the audience. Yeah, but I I didn't see him too much as the Sly Fox kind of character. I mean, I was really looking, even during this encounter here, I was really looking for the true him to come out. That Mbinga was going to pull that out of him. Uh, if I had to role play something like this, uh, I, I would have said something like, ah, so you've seen behind the veil, have you? 
good doctor. Uh, what's the let's see what kind of real man you really are if I had a chance I would have killed you with my bare hands none of that wording came out <laughs> you know no, I, I, I did expect that, that to happen that and it did not it did, it did not and it's wonderful that it did. oh really you think it's absolutely, wonderful yeah. absolutely interesting they, they, this was uh, first of all I hope it's not gonna bother anybody if I get this one ten. Yeah. Um, this Everything about this show and the, the performances and the script and everything is intended to uh, keep you off balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew you were, yeah. To make nothing about the situation you have. You know, uh, what you're talking about and probably the way I would have done it is very traditionally melodramatic. There is no behind the mask with Raw as far as I can tell. As, yeah, as, and saying he's an extraordinarily fascinating, sophisticated person who, for the most part, believes what he's saying. Um, there's a key line of uh, Mabengas. I mean, he knows he knows he's killing people, but there's a key line of Mabengas in the final confrontation. Well, no, actually, in, in sparring, where Mabenga says, You make it look easy. And I think that um, uh, what Mabenga struggles with constantly is responsibility and. and being fully aware all the time of the things he's done that trouble him. And Ma, by contrast, has sort of rewritten past events for his, in his own mind. Uh, my good works are, you know, are, the, are the result of the sort of crucible. It's very self -centered. He went through this crucible, you know, in his mind and this, this conflict, and he came out of it in this very same person. And he believes that until he shows real hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I guess I think that was the most the most telling line for Ra, though, but because it showed the true him was, "Hey, Mabenga, if if we look like allies, it's good for our image." Yeah, and that's, that seems to be his whole how much we can accomplish. Think how much good we can accomplish. Whatever's good for him, he persuades himself, and yeah, it's good for everybody. Yeah, there, there obviously is going to be a lot of, and I doubt seriously because we're down to the last few episodes of this season, but uh, there's a lot of questions that are unanswered uh, uh, that we uh, need to see as I, I fiddle through the pictures here. Um, there is something that we don't know about these two. Number one, the Andorian commander knew more about Mbenga and his past than any of us. And this is something that hasn't been revealed to us. What, what, what do you mean? You called him the ghost. You know, what are we looking at? A Jason Bourne character here on the Enterprise? Uh, that hasn't been explained to us as of yet. And like I said, I don't know if we're going to get it. But what is they, it about they this? They may have, ex they may have they explained, may have explained everything, everything they're going to explain with the, the Protocol, Protocol 12, 12 and the Super Soldier, Super Soldier Serum. Serum and but we I may agree, not get any more on that. Yeah, even with um, it, it's been mentioned that Section Thirty One series has been released to 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 carry on, uh, to proceed now, so it could fall under that umbrella. Although that's a different. I'm got my star dates messed up like you guys wouldn't that's believe. Like Thirty second second century or something. My God, with Discovery shooting off to wherever the hell they are now, I am so screwed up. I don't even know where Section Thirty One is falling into. Uh, wherever they feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> 31 is the, the Swiss Army knife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you got I Michelle so Yeoh's. I, I, I was so glad that he was not involved uh, in this uh, Black Ops. It's, it's only a TV movie now, now, though, Mark. Oh, 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 it is, in fact, a just a, t just a TV movie? Yeah. yeah. It's well, not it's 10 episodes. Really, 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 oh. You can really hold on to Michelle Yeoh. Yeah. yeah. She's, yeah. You know, her, She's her, her, her busy. I mean, of course, if you, if you troll the interwebs, everybody's like, oh, Star Trek can't do anything about Michelle Yeoh. She's too busy. She won an Oscar, all this stuff. And yeah. she was just in somebody else's 10-episode series yet again. She's, yeah. she's clearly available if they do it. But she makes herself available, you know? Yeah, 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 you, I don't know what production rates were like or anything, but uh, to get a commitment from her to a series where you don't even know when they're going to launch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm well, yeah. The, the, the further back, 
if they want to go back and do a story that goes further into this, I suppose they could. I suspect that'll come up in some Strange New Worlds comic book or novel. They can sure. everything they need to explain. I don't think there's any necessary mystery about, um, you know, Trask and Mabenga. Mabenga was black ops. Trask essentially says that Mabenga was black ops. Um, they all know that. His right. knows that. Mabenga knows that, and they said it. And you sort of, you know, and, and that's all you need to know. And they also, although it wasn't necessary, I don't think, made clear where and how Mabenga developed that, um, that green theory. So I, yeah. think I think maybe they're done with this. They do show the beginning of his friendship with um, Chapel, and, and um, that's something that they had touched on, so it's nice to see it. I think that part of understanding why Mabenga situation is not taken more seriously by people like I in this episode, just to jump in on that very quickly, uh, to loop back on something we're talking about, is that the structure of the script um, gives the uh, audience, uh, it shows us things that all the characters don't know. It does it several times. And Mabenga hides the extent of his PTSD or extent of his trauma and problem with Ra from everyone but Chap, because Chap has been. Pike doesn't. Pike knows that his veteran, his Klingon war veteran, have a real have real trouble emotionally. He doesn't know that the doctor has special trouble. He may intuit a little, but it's never shared until the very end. Um, Mabeng is hiding. Okay. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I, I'm going to move ahead to what we were talking about. I couldn't get exact photos. I just got a bunch of photos. Uh, but obviously, we want to talk about uh, someone who is... Where is my picture of it? I had it up there, and I didn't. Uh, of a crew member. <laughs> Star Trek alumni, shall I say. That was another dark picture you sent me. Mm -hmm. um, is it this one? No, nope, not that one. My bad. Now let me find it again. Uh, Pat, you're still there, right? Yep, yep. I'll make sure I didn't lose you because this is your photo. Um, we're about to show you. Uh, oh, for God's sakes, man. You guys got me off guard here. Where is that photo? I think I got it. Where, ah, there we go. So this character we need to talk about. This is uh, Star Trek uh, alumni here that we're looking at as we speak. And if I can share this screen, I don't know if you guys can see this. I need to take this off first. Let me do this. Uh, are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah, probably. we think so. Okay. So where's your face here? If you see what I'm seeing on the screen, because I'm going back and forth, obviously I can't do everything at the same time here or maybe i can uh let's go ahead and talk a little bit about clint howard and how clint howard got involved uh in this episode um pat i'll let you talk while i'm fiddling around here trying to find something more palatable so i so i didn't, I didn't find, find any any direct, direct link of, of why he why got he involved got in this episode, in this episode. But, but clearly they clearly must they have must known, have known. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah yeah, it's it's. I mean, do you think they were f trying to find a spot to put him in, or um, my spec? My yeah, that would be that my, would speculation be my speculation. Is somebody, somebody said, "Hey, we hey, should we should use Clint Howard at some point," and they waited for the right the right thing to come along. Yeah, let me ask you: Did he? Do you think he acted older than he actually is in real life in this episode, and for a reason, or that's actually how? Clint Howard is kind of uh, carrying himself around these days. I I hope, I hope he, he acted, acted a little, little more haggard, haggard than, than he is, is in real life. life. Right. <laughs> I don't know for sure. He was yeah, nine I, years old when he played Baylock in 1965. 35, 58 plus nine. He's 67 years old. Yeah, so yeah, he, so he was born in 58 or 59, so he's not... Yeah, sure. so he's about 65. I, mean, I, don't, I, think I don't... I think he's playing... He's, younger, he's than younger than Dennis. Dennis. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, everybody, everybody is younger, is younger than Dennis. 
<laughs> Look, I'm busy scrambling here, and that one you just threw across <laughs> on me. That was pretty, pretty good there, Pat. I'm, I'm impressed. Um, Clint Howard. Clint Bailock is looking at me. I'm sorry, Clint Howard is. Clint Howard. Clint Howard is Star Trek royalty, ladies and gentlemen, and even if you want to put him in the guest starring uh, portion of him, but he's just uh, motion picture uh, royalty. Of course, you know he is the brother of Ron Howard, and I cannot find a picture of little... Oh, yes, I did. I think I found it. Stand by. Um, a picture of young uh, Clint Howard. I remember... Because I'm a huge Andy Griffin fan, and I remember Andy Griffin episodes uh, as I speak and hustle at the same time here to try to get these pictures up to show you guys. I think I got one here now that I want to show you, because what you're about to see... Okay, I got it. I got it. Talking about Clint Howard here, and... Oh, there he is. Is Look Look at that. That's his dad wow. in real life, Ron Howard, and Clint Howard. Uh, you know, well, my wife, my wife man, 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 uh, uh, likes, likes Andy, Andy Griffith's show. Great, great. So, oh yeah, I've seen, I've seen a lot of it. Lot of it. I, I can recite episodes. It's so scary. Yeah, Ron, uh, dude. Ron, Ron Howard was one of the most affecting natural child actors I ever saw. Ever saw. I agree. Just to see, you know, you know. I agree. All right, why are these comments? There's a bunch of comments. Uh, Clint is 64. Okay. That's not bad. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, yeah. he looks about his age. Yeah. Uh, but he was a crusty old medical bastard in this episode of uh, Under the Cloak of War. Um, as some of you may have seen, some of you may have. Uh, oops. I don't want to do that. Remove. That's what I want. Okay. So, Mark, right. are we going to do numbers for this episode? Yeah, I was going to get to that. You're you're reading my mind, Pat. You're 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 jumping ahead of me, and that's all fine because you at least you're reminding me not to forget to do it. And I actually was thinking of doing it. I just want to make sure that we've covered everything that we want to cover uh, about this episode. Is there anything that that stands out that you guys want to mention that? Could be followed up later on. You think um, the relationship? Quick notes. Go ahead. I think this is the biggest biggest commitment to flashback flashback since the menagerie. Yeah, I I know we've had flashback in other of the you know the thousand of Star Trek episodes that have been in all the series, but I don't think we ever made you know the two plots running simultaneously. One of them be. Two, three years ago. Let me tell you, the, the, the one thing that struck me really, really heavy when I saw these flashback episodes and the way they were played out, and you know, all this stuff was done uh, against green screen, blue screen, whatever you want to call it, but in terms of the any uh, uh, anti, uh, oh my God, anti craft weaponry that was going in the background, I went straight to this planet Earth when I like saw that. Planet, yeah, very 50. Yeah, very 50s. It was very 50s on those flashback scenes when I saw all the anti-aircraft fire going up in the air. I'm like, this is this planet Earth, because when they landed on the planet in this planet Earth, that's all you see. They were still in battle with the the other uh, planet that they were uh, warring against. And I'm looking at these episodes and I say, holy crap, man, this is this is you're right about the commitment in terms of flashbacks on this. Uh, And and to take advantage of, you know, you know. This war this wasn't war just a bunch, bunch of starships flying, flying around, around, you know. Yeah, it was yeah, down it was in, the in the trenches. trenches. Yeah, it was I on the planet. At some point, Dennis, Dennis was, involved. was involved. Somebody, involved. Somebody said, oh it's, "Oh, it's space match," match. and I said, and I "It's said, space it's match, match except, except Hawkeye, Hawkeye kills, kills a, lot a lot of people." Of people. Yes, yeah. yes, I, I, I saw that. I'm not the guy who said space match. I know, but it's it's really it's it was it was necessary in 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 any war. I mean. How Starfleet grew and, when, and everything. It was well done. Very it was well done. done. It was well done. I, I like how. I, I also love the fact that Mabenga copped to the transporter buffer thing, yeah. which, he which he used for his daughter, for his daughter in, season in season one. one. Yes. Yeah. Evidently, it was something he improvised or was passed on to him in combat medicine. I thought that was very cool. I thought so too. And not, and not mention, you know, I like the way they do that. I also like, just once we talk about small moments or, or moments like that, I, I really appreciated the, um, 
after the opening credits when they first go to the flashback, they go Jagal a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it was, it, <laughs> that's the way they do. It's like they're saying, Gates, we don't need no. Sense. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Fought in, in the 1990s eugenics for a second time. Yeah, you you, you could see somebody. The yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can see somebody make note of that. It's like, well, wait a minute. They put the star date of when they were on that planet, and then yeah, Kirk was only. Because somebody that. It was great. It, 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 it was fantastic. Um, All right. The only thing I would like to mention about this episode in terms of things we might come back to in another conversation is, um, um, well, first of all, you know, what Phil Pat said, um, um, the, the shooting, and you the, the direction in the shooting and the tight angle is very different. I, I, I wish we had time to talk more about the, uh, the, the ambiguity of the final scene and film, because I think that's central to the story. They, yeah. They, they don't give you, they give you enough evidence to come to different conclusions if you choose. I think they had something in mind for reading the interviews. I think they had something in mind in terms of how it went down. Uh, but uh, uh, they, 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 they said they, 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 they cut it several ways for the, you know, for the producers, uh, and they finally settled on the don't know what happened version. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, and I had forgotten about it already, but I'm not sure I'm a fan of how it ended. Um, it, it, that was a criminal act that was performed on, the, uh, on, on, a, on a Federation starship, and everybody accepted the 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 explanation of I was attacked first, okay. Well, it's going to be an alien. Well, I yes, the, he did mention that he he, he did mention that that it's going to be an inquiry. But my God, how could that have come about? I understand it's 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 kill or be killed scenario, and I'm sure that happens even in in modern day life as it is. No witnesses around, but you're not gonna wait for a witness to show up to see that you're doing this in self-defense I, I get it <laughs> I, I I totally get it but I'm not sure I don't know I understand well, that Spock he, still the Federation starship twice and still gets his pain well yeah I yeah well that's not murder though I I think it's murder different <laughs> yeah I I'm not sure that I, I murder is a legal death I yeah. Okay, so Pat. Let's let's go. Let's go to you. How did you feel about the way this ended? Well, I was surprised, and I and I think that comes from the fact that the guy is a doctor. Even though we did the super soldier thing in the first episode, and you know he kicked ass on a bunch of Klingons. But I'll tell you what did come to my mind was Duras in the Next Generation. Because when because Worf, Worf killed Duras, Duras he yeah. takes that final blow, and I thought, oh my God, we're just gonna cut down. And we're going to see that Worf has spared, spared his life, and he's, and he's just fine. fine. And he <laughs> wasn't. And I was like, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> get to this point. Yeah. But they did. So, I mean, I, I believe it is possible for this character to have done what he did. I'm not going to try to decide whether it was the right decision or not. So Mike, Mike wants to cop out to this. <laughs> Well, I, 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 it's, it's got his tongue a little bit. Yeah. 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 Okay. A general, a seasoned as warrior. As, 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 as told by Dr. Mabenga. Look, look, look. They tell you not to, not to run with scissors. So obviously the general ran with the knife and like, oops, my bad. <laughs> you know. Yeah, he was cleaning his gun. Yeah, he was cleaning his gun. <laughs> um, something that we might come back to at another time. Yeah. Is, um, um, the way that I think this theory is, is contextualizing a lot of uh, the original Star Trek. I don't know that they have the things to do it, you know, beyond what you're thinking about this week. But you can watch those shows now and see a kind of a different world um, based on particularly episodes like this. And maybe we want to talk about that another time. But I think, well, I think really an episode like this affects. If you want to go watch Aaron of Mercy now, yeah, I think you can see those people in a very different environment than we than we uh, thought about them. That is a post-war world. Yeah. In the original yeah. In the same way that uh, the early '60s, when these people were creating Star Trek, was a post-World War II world. So it's it's kind of a nice. Thing. Yeah. Well, we're gonna do we are we are gonna do a, a season recap, you know, show. 
uh, just so we can follow through on on uh, a quick recap of of the entire season of episodes. Oh, I didn't get my number out. What? N- I know. Nine. We're going there. Okay, Pat, what's your <laughs> score <laughs> for this nine. episode? A nine. Okay, Dennis. And I'm gonna caveat that um, with. You know, my, my mother told me to save myself, and I didn't listen to her then, and I'm not sorry. So I've got as many tens as I can. Oh, good God! Um, Come on. I don't know why I would. I uh, I have yet to see an episode of the series where my complaints were more than this. Yeah. Well, uh, they just hit the the park every week. And something I absolutely love, and I know we've all said this before on this show, you do not know from this week's episode exactly what you're going to get in next week's episode. Yeah. You know, it's not another episode of TNG um, or or anything. So I guess that segues, helps you take way into your next topic. So you're not going to give us, uh, other than the 10, you're not going to give us any other number. And Pat, you were going to. You gonna you were gonna segue or you wanna add to that score you just I, said. I, through no fault of this episode, I think being very good. I just don't feel like the ones I've given given tens to I just don't know that I'm gonna rewatch this one a lot. Well, I don't think I'm gonna rewatch it again. I, I my score is a eight point five. Uh, on this episode only because I explained of what I didn't accept. I, I, I don't like the fact he got away with it. Uh, I don't think this general was as insidious enough for me to think that he was, you know, uh, well, I mean, he wasn't a, a coward in the field, but yet he did things prior to that to gain him a reputation. And I didn't see that reputation at all when he was, uh, you know, even alone with Mbinga. So uh, 8.5 is probably the most that I can give it. Um, that's fine. I am so sorry that I have to torture the audience with uh, next week's episode. Um, look, I've, it could be incredible. We may be coming back here next week and raving over what we're about to see, but I ain't there yet. So right now, I, well, I, I think this, I think probably, well, I'm about to show you, <laughs> I love theater too. I love music. My God, man, I can recite the music man forward and backwards. Uh, I'm a big fan of that, but I'm watching Glee. I'm watching Glee. I did not ask my shows if you're going to do a musical show, it better be a musical motion picture. That way I know it's one and done. Um, but my God, to, to just throw it in uh, because everybody else has done it. I'm honestly thinking that's the only reason they're they're doing this. And I'm trying to find this damn clip. I, I'm probably doing it partly because these producers, one of them has done musical episodes of previous shows he's worked on. And uh, at least one in the librarians did a musical episode or two. Uh, okay, so this is one of my friends who drinks a lot. I'm just going to preface this with before her before you read her comment, okay? She's a drinker, all right? I, she, I, I don't drink. I, it, there's <laughs> no... It, no, she better than Glee. Okay, well... Actually, I just defended Glee. What the hell came into me? I don't know what I just did there. I think this is Wait, the I clip. Guess, I guess you the clip, right? Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm thinking this is the right one. This might not be, so stand by okay. for this.
frozen. It's frozen, I tell you. Oh, I'm stabbing myself in the eye as we speak, okay? I'm just saying. It, I can't wait. <laughs> no, I can't. I mean, I love I musical love theater. theater. I love the <laughs> attitude of this show. I love the fact that they wouldn't do this. I think that this, uh, the, everything about this, you know, this series, the departure from the sort of scams that uh, people producing these shows have taken since the 80s. And I think, uh, uh, briefly, I think that Star Trek should be the yes and franchise. If you, you know, know the, the basic the principle of, of, of involved with uh, improv comedy, right? Which is just a matter of what the previous person in the sketch launches, throws into the mix you don't, you don't try, try to, to, you don't back, back off, off it. it. You don't, you don't, you don't change, change direction. direction. You go, yes, yes and. and. And saying, let's do a musical. And, and, yes, yes, and. and. Okay. All right. So being the circuit court judge that I am, I am throwing your defense of this episode completely out the door. Okay. It's, it's, it, it, it doesn't register with me. I, I'm still, I'm standing still here. I'm going to look at this episode next thursday this is up to this upcoming thursday as we speak with cotton wads in my fingers just i'm seeing frozen these guys are going to go completely out of character they're going to do solos they're going to do dancing down the hall like this was freaking west side story or something like that man i am in revolt i i'm so, I'm going to repeat what I said last week to help allay you a little bit. But okay. Tom, Tom Pulse was the drummer for Letters to Cleo, and he scored a, like 186 episodes of NCS New Orleans. And he's in the CBS stable of composers. I don't know how he got attached to this specifically. Maybe, maybe the other composers, the producers, reached out to him. He also was virtually all songs in crazy ex-girlfriend oh there he is um, so these guys ha and he reached out to kate hanley uh to write the lyrics for this and kate hanley was featured as the vocalist in the movie 10 things i hate about you uh singing songs at the high school so i think these people if anybody's going to pull it off i think they've got the talent attached with the, with street, the street cred, cred to, get, to there. get there. Hello, Germany! And, and, and that said, I thought that the clip at the end of the ready room that is clearly the pivotal point of how this is about to happen. I think I went into a coma at that time. Yeah, I don't remember. I was in a coma. I, 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 no, that, that episode just, just freaking knocked me out and not in a good way. But um, I understand both you guys' defense of this. Uh, you have high hopes for it. Uh, I hope it doesn't, it doesn't make, it, what is, the hell is that? I have no idea who that is. Depending on what I'm saying, I want to mention, depending on where you are, uh, at Apple Music right now, samples of every, of the entire soundtrack for this show are on for next year. Um, I have friends who have been able to access the link, and I have friends who haven't been able to, and I can't explain the difference. But if you go to Apple Music, it, no. Search around. No. You may be able to find the link. So no. What else in the audience is interested in seeing whether they think it's good or bad? It's no. Maybe I'll be out there. Okay. So, ladies and Prime gentlemen. Strange New World, Celia Gooding was touring with Jagged Little Pill. And Lon just released an album. So we know they can sing. Christina Chong. You know. Just into Christina Chong's uh, okay, look, you know, you guys can you can stand behind the credits all you want on this freaking episode. Frozen made me stab my eyes out through the back of my head. Mark, and I, 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 is, let it go. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this, this has been uh, our version of our review show for uh, each episode of or, or recent episodes of Strange New Worlds. Uh, unfortunately, we have to return back next Sunday. I'm sure Phil would be back for this. I, I'm sure uh, Michael Jan Freeman will be on here as well because I think everybody, I'm going to be the antagonist for next weekend 
Uh, I'm going to honestly, even if it's fantastic, I have to keep this persona. Okay, I can't be the villain. I can't be the general as we saw in this. And uh, I, I honestly um, will watch this. Of course, I have to because Strange New War Worlds is an incredible Thank you, series. Thank you. Yep. And, and, we, Thanks, Mike, Mike. and we do this uh, just basically to give our opinions of what we've seen and, and heard over the, the, the past week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we wait three days after what we've seen of the episode and we come to you with it. Um, <laughs> I have no idea who you're talking to, Tara. <laughs> <laughs> because if you don't know my feelings by now, then you haven't been listening. Um, so <laughs> I have no idea who she's 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 pointing to on all of this. But um, uh, Pat, we know you have to go. Uh, Phil, we know you've been watching and you did comment. Uh, we really appreciate you guys keeping up with this. Yeah, yo, that's true. Um, but we are different than any other review show, as we're, we're real. I mean, we're, we're real. And, yeah, and, and right? yeah, yeah. And, and you're talking to literally industry professionals in, in, in terms of Dennis and Mike and, and, and these guys, knowledgeable gentlemen in, in terms of Pat and Phil and what they come up with. I mean, uh, Pat sends me photos that I can't find anywhere each and every week, things that I've never seen, but it's, it's, it's behind the scenes kind of photos. And that's just fantastic that Pat does that. Please keep it up, Pat. Um, that's just freaking incredible. Strange New Worlds is what we discuss. Uh, watch our other show this upcoming Friday, like I said, on Classic Television Smackdown. What we do, we're going to focus on the sci-fi TV shows of the 70s, for those of you that were born. <laughs> you know, raise your hand if you were around in the 70s. Pat. There you go. Okay. Dennis, you were around in the 30s. But anyway, so we'll make sure that uh, we'll do a good show there. And then Saturday morning cartoons we do each and every week, too, on Classic Stuff. Um, so we'll make sure that we see you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate it. We're going to go off and sa sound off. Pat, thank you for hanging around this long. I know you Thanks, needed to guys. go, um, but it's fantastic that you did it. Uh, Dennis, you're fantastic. You have a lot to say. Long pause. Sadly. Sadly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we appreciate you, your insight because you guys are just geniuses in my, in my respect. Uh, one day we'll have Mark Okren on here, but we know he's under contract to keep his mouth shut. Uh, the Klingon episode, I wish we could have had him on here for that, but I'm sure when all this is over, maybe the recap show, we can finally have Mark on here. Uh, that, that might work. So, uh, you guys go. Thank you so much. This has been the end of our broadcast. We appreciate it. See you on Friday. Talk to you guys shortly.